Hello everybody and welcome to today's broadcast, a loving reminder. And my name is Narayani, for those of you who I haven't met. Today we are not sure at this moment how many of you have joined us for today's broadcast. And I get the sense that there is a lot of you from all over the world sharing this space with us right now. So thank you for being here and welcome to this wonderful co-creation that we are having together today. So before we go into today's broadcast, just a few simple reminders. It's always nice to be in a space where you'll be undistracted for, for the call so you can really appreciate and fully um, dedicate yourself to the next hour or however long the broadcast will last. And of course, cell phones, things like that, if you just switch them off, it will support that process for you. Thank you for hearing me, and I will hand you over to Ashamre, and we can begin today's broadcast. Thank you. Let's all take a unified deep breath. So, one of the things I'm reminded to share is uh, I was reading uh, a speech given by Sai Baba. And Baba was talking about human beings' past lives and how you've had so many lives as a man, as a woman. You've had husbands, you've had wives. You've had boyfriends, you've had girlfriends. Um, they maybe had different names back then, but you've had so many different past lives. And the fact that you don't remember, and Baba said, if you were to remember every past life loss, when your husband died, or your child died, or your wife died, or your mother died, or your father, on and on. And if you were to remember all of the choices you made that weren't so fruitful in every past life, your life would be a living hell right now. You wouldn't be able to handle one bit of it because you'd feel such loss. But the fact that you create yourself to forget um, it's almost kind of like when a, a woman has a child, she eventually forgets to some degree the massive journey she went through. And then, because uh, I've been with Narani through two pregnancies, and uh, on the second one she says, oh, I, I really forgot what this was like, and holy moly. And so, What's the point? The point is, is you forget so you don't suffer. You forget so you can focus in on what you're being, uh, what you're choosing in your life now, uh, in this reality. And then you can take that and you can also mirror that right into your past life of yesterday, last week, last month, last year, two years ago, five years ago. It's the same thing. The only difference is, is that you have more of a memory of it. Yet you can choose, as Amachi says, the past is like trying to cash a canceled check. It's pointless. You're not going to be able to cash it. There's uh, nothing there. It's all in your mind. And the more and the more, uh, as Yogananda said, Yogananda said, um, and I'm paraphrasing, yet the gist is the same, that let go of your past, all your mistakes that you made, uh, let go of all the things that you chose that were unwise, and also let go of all your victories, all the wise choices you made and the things that bared a lot of wonderful fruit, because those can also be stumbling box, blocks to right now. Be totally here now, be new. 
be the ever-present student of what the divine is teaching you in every single moment. Don't take any victory from the past and don't use the past uh, for the element of bolstering yourself for the now because it's an illusion. And don't use the past of uh, the mistakes or the challenges or whatever words work for you of the things that you chose and you did that, that you wish you didn't and to knock yourself right now. Let it all go, every bit of it, and fully embrace that right now we have a totally new moment, this exact moment. Uh, nothing is the same in any given moment. And in that, if you choose, you really can live a whole new life right now vibrationally. And in that act of, of fully embracing now, uh, fully letting go of the past, not concerning too deeply about the future, and really being present with what's going on in your life, which is just what's right in front of you, right now. You change your past and your future. Now, I've talked to some people, they just can't wrap their heads around the idea of changing your past and your future. Well, if you live in the eternal now, the eternal moment, and we exist in an eternal field of consciousness, which for those who are scientific minded, which is fine, uh, science is already discovered through the quantum field as they're calling it, that it's this one field. Um, masters and yogis and, the, and Sikhs, they've, they've known this forever. Uh, the Aborigines, the Dogon of Africa, they've known this for a long time. It's nothing new. So in that field of the eternal now, what we call the past and the future is already existing. And when you change your now, you send out waves of energy that changes your past. For example, if someone uh, had something extremely unkind happen in this life, um, the moment they find authentic forgiveness for that thing, they change their own molecular structure in their body. The waves of energy that pulses through their own body changes. And then as those energy waves change, they exist in the eternal now and everything past and forth also changes and literally if you went to the Akashic records there is a different past it changes everything changes nothing is static nothing's set in regards to um, you can't become something new right now so as we move forward with today's, uh, today's work, remember that right now is your golden ticket. How you perceive, what thoughts you hold, whether you're focused on the past or the present or you're trapped in the idea of the future and, and not living in the now, Whatever it is, you can, you can change this right now, this exact moment, and you can make it a living practice. And the interesting part is, for me at least, is I've gotten to see how my mind does its best to convince me that I have to be concerned for the future and I have to be hard on myself for the past. And it's always knocking on the door saying, oh, by the way, I'm still here to remind you of all the things that are irrelevant to right now. And my spirit, my higher self, my master self, quietly just brings my attention and says, breathe, focus here. There's so much happening right here. In fact, with the body, this is where you can make your biggest impact with your thoughts, your hands, 
your voice right here, right now. So let us together, if you're willing, choose to make a commitment that from this moment forth, even if you've been doing it, from this moment forth, you're going to become more focused on the present. You're going to become more aware of what's going on around you. You're going to breathe deeper and you're going to be masterful with the actions that you're facilitating in your now. Because we can always improve. And I was asked, I was asked, how is it that uh, I know I'm actually doing something? How do I know that I'm having an impact that's changing me spiritually and I'm growing, life's going to improve for me? How do I know that? And I said, you know that to where your focus is. Where are you putting your attention? And that saying, you know them by what they do. And by what they do, remember that statement? Uh, I think it was, it. was that in the Bible? You know them by what they do? I don't know. I know, I, I, I know a master said this. You, you will know them by what they do. And you notice the master didn't say, you will know them by what they did. Or you will know them by what they're going to do in the future. You'll know them by what they're doing in that moment. And if you experience any moment in someone's doing something that's not in alignment with you, don't hold that to them. That's just what they're doing. Their next moment, you know, I, I know personally someone who was a hardcore crack addict, full on, that's almost as worse as you can get. And someone would have looked at him back then and said, <laughs> you are, you're gone, you, you're one of life's tragedies, and you know, regular life would have said that. But spirit never said that to this man. And he got off of crack, he got off of alcohol, um, he's been sober for 25 or 27 years. And I can't say what he does, but I can say he makes a huge impact on people's lives. Huge. And this is from a crack addict to massive impact. So someone could easily look at someone sm him smoking crack and say, oh, you're, you're, this is who you are. Not so. There are thousands and thousands of those examples of people choosing to change. Hence, if you have anyone in your life, a brother, a sister, a friend, uh, a partner, anything, don't hold them to how they are being. Even their great beingness. If you have someone in your life being great, just say, oh, that's wonderful. You know they can be greater the more more. Remember, we don't journey on our spiritual path to evolve into something, to improve ourselves. Not in my reality, that's not so. We spiritual journey and we do these things so we can bring out what's already there. We don't have to become anything. We already are that. It's just the remembering part and the removal of the dross, the delusion, the illusion, the uh, forgetfulness, whatever energies and beliefs and thought waves that are there that are covering the truth. And as we go along on our journey, it's like we have something we say, oh, that's, that's not me. And he just kind of, let it go. And if you were to see it in form, letting go of personality traits or energies or thought waves, it's like you, you see something that looks real and it, and a puff of smoke, and just gone. Why? It wasn't real anyway. So remember, we're not evolving into something. We 
are simply expressing more of what is already inside our own heart. It's already there. Every master has already said, as Sai Baba said, you're God. Every master says, you're masters. In fact, Saint Germain has said, only a master could fool himself so perfectly that he wasn't a master. And so remember that as you journey, as you go on journeys, you're not going to fix yourself. You're not going to uh, change yourself, become something that you're not. You're literally going to, on a journey to let out more of what you already are and let go of what you're not. No, mm. oh, God is good. All right, let's take a deep breath into our hearts. Let's together close our eyes. Let us together set the intent. We thank you, Mother, Father, God, the Ascended Masters, the Archangels, all divine beings who are in service to love, to kindness, for joining us as we come together not only for ourselves but for our world, for our brothers and sisters in this world and for our universe and all of creation. That all beings in all worlds may be happy and at peace. And we call forth with God's grace the highest good of this energy and all that this energy will touch. And we thank you, Mother, Father, God, for your grace and for guiding the way that we may remember more and more, moment by moment, who we are and that we may see others as more than they're showing us. And we hold that vision. In your name, Mother, Father, God, Goddess, Om Shanti. If you haven't already, close your eyes. and bring your awareness to your breathing, to your heart chakra, to the point of the sternum. And call forth the feeling of love. And if it supports you, you can imagine a moment that really opened your heart, that you felt so much love. Or another term is you felt so much love because that which was covering your heart was removed and love poured forth, whether that was the birth of your child, a moment with a, a master, a sunrise, a swim in the ocean, a flower, laughter with a good friend. Call forth that moment in your mind to activate the feeling of, in your heart of love. And recognize that we're all here this moment because we care, we have love in our hearts. We'd like to see our own life and the lives of others sweeter, our earth clean and at peace and balanced. And with your intention, there's a lot of people on this call right now and we don't know all their names and where they are, yet our spirit knows and with our intention, we connect heart to heart. So just see a beautiful light coming from your heart, golden light, and coming out through your left side. And it goes out with your intent to every person who is a part of this in this moment, sending them love, connecting with them. 
And in truth, we are already connected. This exercise is for us to become aware of that. And we breathe in the love from everyone else into ourself, into our heart, from our right side, creating a circle of love from our hearts. Let's do that now with your intent. Loving light coming out from your heart out to every person. To the Ascended Master Saint Germain, to the Christ Council, the Galactic Council, the Archangels, Divine Mother. And we receive that love into the right. And hold your awareness to our unification in the heart. Now together as one, let us feel love for Mother Earth and with your intention, like a ray of light coming from your heart, going down deep into Mother Earth so she can feel our love. Let's do that together right now. Feel love in your heart for the Earth, her beautiful oceans, her forest, her streams, her mountains, her flowers, the food she gives us, the body she gave us. the rocks, the soil, the trees. And just fill yourself with love and gratitude for this beautiful being, Gaia. And together let us send a ray of light down deep into Mother Earth to her core. Just see it, feel it move through your body, down through, through the floor, right into the earth. And remember, she is a living, fully conscious being. She knows this moment. She knows exactly what's happening. And she knows you intimately. And as a physical being on this planet, she knows you better than any other physical being besides those who are fully enlightened. And let's fill her with our love. And together let's feel her love come back through us. And she will always send her love back through us. For she loves you deeply. feel love for the sun, this divine being who's always shining light on us, who is always loving us. Like the divine father in form. Beautiful and radiant. And feel your love and gratitude for the sun. And together, let us send that love into the sun. Remember, your intention is powerful. And feel the love of the sun come back through you, through all of us as one.
Now feel love in your heart for you, for yourself. That through a very challenging world, which can be very challenging, you continue on. You keep striving to improve, to be kind. You're here this moment. Because you care, to some degree you care. Feel love for you. Through all the adversities you've gone through, you're still striving forward. Yes, feel love for you. Now we're going to take a few moments. We'll sit in silence. Please keep your eyes closed. Stay inside. And just breathe. Focus on the breathing fully. And be still. Take a deep breath. And when you're ready, open your eyes, please.
How are you doing? Mm, how are you doing, Lakshmi? Mm, what does that mean? How are you doing? No, we are asking Lakshmi. And how are you doing in the present moment? You feel full. Mm. Then how are you doing, Joyce? And how are you doing? Excellent. Mm. And how are all of you doing? Mm. Some here to investigate. Wonderful. Mm. You know, when you want to investigate something, to deliberate through the mind, mm, you will always create roadblocks to what is in front of you. The mind cannot deliberate. Mm? If you truly wish to know something that is before you, you deliberate through the heart. You feel. So as you sit here, deliberating, feel through your heart. Feel what your body is telling you. Mm? Mm. Take a deep breath. A reminder, a loving reminder, an interesting title. Mm -hmm. You have two words within the whole of the two, love and mind. Mm. The third word, re, to re-mind. Mm. Love, re, mind. When you let love be your guide, you let yourself record in your mental body what love shows you then when you choose to access the mental body, all you have is loving thoughts. It is not so much the case with humanity. When they go to access their mind, primarily they access the mind to judge something. Rare is the person who looks upon another and says, oh, let me remember something beautiful that I can apply to what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. Most people use the mind as a form of defense. Mm -hmm. They see something they are unsure. Mm -hmm. Then they go to the mind and say, let me access something in there that will confirm or deny my unsurety. Mm. Mm. They see that person walking by. They meet someone new. They go into the files of the mind and say, where do you fit in to my files so I can understand you? Mm -hmm. And this is all of you. Mm -hmm. This is what the majority does. They calculate, they measure according to the files they have. The interesting part is everyone has different files. Mm -hmm. The files are created according to your life experience.
So you meet someone or you go into a new experience. Maybe you don't fully understand what's in front of you. So you use the image of what you see. And then you marry that image according to what you're feeling in the moment. And for most, they're feeling the most subtle fear. Hmm? Even the most quiet uncomfort is a form of fear. Remember, you either feel love or fear. Hmm? Different expressions of love, different expressions of fear. Feeling one or the other. Rare is the one who meets someone and says, and they say nothing in the mind. They simply feel love in themselves. Opening the door mm -hmm. for the one they're meeting to present whatever they'd like. Mm -hmm. Not being stereotyped for what they're wearing mm -hmm. or their hairstyle or their eye color or skin color. Not being put in any category at all. Fully recognizing I'm experiencing a whole new moment. And in this moment of newness with this one I've never met, and indeed every person in your life and every new moment you have never met, even if you've known them for 20 years. And indeed in your mind you know them. You've known them for 20 years, 10 years, five years, your whole life, whatever. Indeed, when you see someone, whether you have never met them physically, or you've known them for years, in that moment, it is ever new. You do not know them. Yet in the files of your mind, you know them. If you've known them for years, you know them. I know who they are. I've filed it in my mind. My mental body has it fully laid out. Or I've never physically met them. Yet let me look at them. Their clothing, how they're moving their body, Oh, I recognize that type of clothing or that eye color or that word usage. I have it filed in here. Now I'll put them in that category. Now I understand what I'm dealing with. Take a deep breath. And take another deep breath. And take another deep breath. Now, you met someone new that you have not physically met before. You automatically put them in a category and it's very fast. And for the majority, it's unknown. It is not cognitive that they're doing that. They literally imprint what they see in their mind. Hmm? They put that person in a category and then they respond to the category of their own.
creation. Their own thought. Hmm? Now let us paint another picture. You have one that you call enlightened. An awakened being in a body. In every moment, whoever is in front of them, they meet that moment and that person with their heart. And the heart only sees love. It looks past the outfit, the hairstyle, the words, the past. It says, I'm meeting you for the first time with love. And in that act, the master opens the door for that person to relax, to allow more of their true self to flower forth that moment, to soften. Does not make them do that, yet their mere presence of how they see them they draw out a different being from them simply with their presence, with how they choose to see. They see through the heart, not the files of a mind or the categories of a mind. Why do they not do this? Because the mind is only categorizing according to history. And everything is changing every moment. Mm? Whether the body is aging in a moment, mm? whether the body is getting wider or thinner, mm? whether a person is becoming happier or more unhappy, whatever. The Master knows that the being in front of me Mm -hmm. Even if I have known them through an experience for the last five years, or we live in the same house, and they were being a certain way, and ten minutes later they're being something different. It is ever new. There is someone new here, and my intent always is to hold the space, the foreground, for love to meet love, truth to meet truth. And that cannot happen when you categorize people according to their clothing, their hairstyle, their eye color, their skin color, their vocation, how much money they have or don't have. we remind you that there is such a wonderful gift that you will never, ever understand. Yet you can know directly through experience that in making this moment a new moment, which he is anyway. I meet this person new, even if I had talked to them three seconds earlier, or three days earlier, or three years, or three lifetimes. This is a new moment. And in that, I am also new. I am a new expression this moment. For every time you choose to connect and commune with the fluidity of life from your heart, it's ever fresh and alive.
boredom is an impossibility in that frequency. Fear of the future is an impossibility in that frequency. In the past, mm, matters not to the moment. Even this moment, new and alive, and every moment has an open doorway of opportunity for you to express who you are. You are love. You have always been love, always will be love. Yet in the pit of the mind, the sludge of thought, you're trapped in the delusion of ideas, conceptions, and past. And you wonder why life isn't so fruitful. Yet the simple act of embracing each moment hmm, with love in your heart. And if you are challenged in a moment and you know, this moment I have no love, I don't feel any love, then you pray to God, oh God, I know you are love itself. Love through me. I surrender. Love through me. Breathe me. Yet let me not waste one moment of this precious life trapped in my mind. Trapped in the fear of an illusion, convincing me that it's real. And indeed, God is always saying, yes, yes. That you still must choose each moment to slow down enough to see it from your heart. And what are the fruits Hmm? What are the fruits of seeing from your heart? Mm. Let us stick with the biology first. Mm. Your health improves. Mm. Your body will let go of toxicity gently and easily and naturally, without effort. It's the supreme detox. Mm? So many are doing detoxes, and this is wonderful. Yet detoxes are radical. Mm? Detox is another form of imbalance. Mm? Yet it works. Mm? We're not implying not to do it, yet it is an extreme. A balanced detox is the feeling of love and its opposite dissolves. Toxicity in the body simply disappears as if it did not exist. Mm? Mm. This is the power of love. And you don't even know it, you don't even feel it. Mm, you can have a tumor in the body. And the more you stay in the state of vibration of love, mm, the tumor disappears. It does not dissolve and get processed through the body. It simply disappears. For it is a manifestation of fear. 
Hmm? The biology. That is the bonus. Hmm? How do those live 150 years, 200 years, 500 years? Love and simplicity. Mm, take a deep breath. What else does love do for you? Mm -hmm. Love will improve your finances. Mm -hmm. For in that relaxed state of being, emanating love, all that is there to source and supply you for your experience flows to you effortlessly. Struggle ends. Mm. Mm. Indeed. There is much, much more, yet we will touch one more. The door opens for a more direct experience with your unseen friends, your unseen family, your family that exists in spirit form. And the earth Nature begins to unfold her mystery to you, which there are many you know not of. How did Jesus walk on the water? On one level, raised his frequency. What does that mean? Hmm? Recognize that it was not real anyway. Yet it was real on another level of consciousness. Hmm? Hence he had to honor that level of consciousness. Hmm? Filled himself with love. Totally. Emanated love. Totally. The nature elemental of water yielded to that love. Hmm? And made his step solid. Hmm. The trees bowed to him, literally. Flowers released their scent when he'd walk by, in honor of the love coming from him. And that is only a taste, the beginning. Yet the mind will say, well, you're speaking about Jesus. I'm still me. Mm. I still pick my nose without tissue. Mm. I still get angry at drivers. I still curse myself with self-judgment. I still compare, measure, and judge. Yet there is always a beginning. That which is within Jesus is within you. Always. And you begin this moment. Love. Remind. Restructure your thought to only think of loving thoughts. The step to do that is to, in every moment, Focus on your heart. Every moment. Mm -hmm. And pray God, remind me every moment to focus on my heart. Every moment. Mm. And the heart is calm and still. Let my vision be through my heart. And when you are challenged and you feel you cannot, then you say, Dear God, love through me. 
you love through me. And we invite you this moment to make a commitment with God within you. To humbly ask her, ever remind me in every moment to love from my heart, to see from my heart, to act from my heart. And if there's ever a moment that I cannot because I am trapped in my thoughts, I give you permission and I humbly ask that you love through me. And that you remind me when I'm trapped. You dropped a thought in my trapped prism to call on you, to bring my awareness to you and say, love through me. For love is the key that unlocks the door. And once the door is unlocked and you step out of your trapped mind and you turn back f looking from love, you see there's no door at all. This is our loving reminder. You can do it. It will take practice, indeed, yet you can do it. We will hold to that truth. Our vision in this moment is that you do it already. It is already done. You are divine beings with the capacity for love unimagined this moment. You simply have to make it important to you. For what's important to you is what you do. Make it important. Take a deep breath. And feel the love in your heart. Remember, for those who have the thought, I don't have time, time yields to love and becomes whatever is required. Namaste. Take a deep breath. So we invite you, we'll read a few to share how you're feeling right now. We'll read it out to everyone. We'll give a, a minute to see if any come in. If they don't, then we will be complete. While you're typing, in regards to time, Narayana and I both have a direct experience of how time yields. And I was... Uh, facilitating a group in, um, what was the name of that road? In Portobello Road, uh, 333 Portobello Road. 
a place called Bliss. This was years and years ago. And uh, we had either fallen asleep. You can leave it as it is for the moment. Yeah, for the moment. We'd either fallen asleep or... Uh, yeah, we did. And, and woke up and it was 10 minutes before we had to be there. And the drive always took, because of the time that we went, it was always about a 49, 50 minute drive. And so I called to Redfeather, the, the master guy I was working with, and said, you know, I'm going to call and cancel. And, and um, he said, don't, don't cancel. I said, don't cancel. We have to be there. It starts in 10 minutes. It takes 50 minutes to get there. And um, he said, get in the car, put on your favorite chanting music and sing to God and forget about having to be there at any time. And, and fully let, he said, fully let go of everything and just sing to God. So we got in the car. By the time we got in the car, the, I was supposed to be there starting. And uh, I even called the place to say that we're running behind, but no one answered, which I found interesting that no one answered. And so we got in the car. It was the same traffic. Uh, and he told us, don't look at the clock and just sing. And, I don't know, we, <laughs> we drove and 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 we sang and we got there and I went in and I was fully prepared to apologize and the lady behind the counter looked at me and uh, she had a normal response and I looked up at the clock and we were 10 minutes early. What can I say? It's the truth. Uh, we, we didn't, let alone be on time, we went back in time. And everything outside was the same. The traffic was the same traffic. And there's a point of that drive, the time we went, um, that, because it took almost 50 minutes, because it was wall-to-wall -wall traffic, just crawling in, in England when we get close to London. We got there 10 minutes early. And uh, so time does yield. The illusion of time does shift. And I know that directly. So one minute's gone by. Has anyone shared? Tima shares, I feel fantastic and uplifted. Thank you. Yay. P.S. You know them with what they are doing is from, is from the Quran. Oh, it's from the Quran. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know them by what they do is from the Quran. Thank you. And it's so true. And everyone has an opportunity to do something different in the next moment and be different. Liz shares from the Saint Germain Healing Room. That was the most simple and loving call I have ever ever attended. Mm. Bless you, Liz. Bless you too. Kelly Earp shares, I am full of love and looking forward to sharing this through. Just loving everyone and everything. Thank you for this grace and perfect reminder. Mm. TC shares, I'm feeling more enlightened. Thank you for your amazing session and opening it for all to experience together. Mary Bonta shares, I feel enormous love in my heart and really blessed. 
Thank you. Mm. Brina Cooper shares, I feel some way confused, but it was a lovely call. Thank you. Mm. So just a, a loving reminder, you cannot feel confused. Confused is thought-based. Um, feeling is feeling. Feeling is happy, sad, uh, joyful. Um, uh, not even the word depressed is a feeling. That's a description. So remember when you have the word uh, confused and feeling, they're literally different universes. Um, so I would recommend just come back to breathing in your heart because if you're confused, there's a lot of thinking happening. And just breathe back in your heart. Sarah shares, my heart feels full. I so appreciate this reminder to return to the heart when I get trapped in thinking. <laughs> mm. What do I do about this? What do I do about that? To see people with love in my heart, to see myself with love in my heart, to see every circumstance with love in my heart. Thank you, St. Germain. Mm. And w one of the experiences I have in doing this practice is uh, I used to have the desire that when I did this heartfelt practice and I either vibrationally and physically acted loving towards someone, uh, my mind created a need for them to be a certain way. They needed to either respond in a certain way and if they didn't, uh, I would retract that love. If they didn't uh, respond happily or notice or or if they continue being kind of grumpy and, and like, why don't you see I'm loving you? If that's all conditional coming out of the mind, you know, of how things are to be. Remember, when you're allowing love and you're just loving and you're pouring love from your heart and you're seeing through loving eyes, there's no expectation of people to be anything other than what they're being. Because you're not focused on the exterior, you're focused on the truth inside them and you're seeing them as beautiful. And seeing someone as beautiful isn't seeing them acting according to what your definition of beauty is. Uh -uh. Most people say, I saw them as loving and kind, acting this way in my thoughts. This is what loving and kind is. Well, loving and kind can be different to every single person. So it's not seeing them act in any way. It's just knowing in your heart that the same love in me is in them. And my focus and intent through the feeling and seeing through my heart is connecting to that in them and simply radiating it. What they do with it, they do with it. You know, I've, I've done a lot of groups and people come and there will be people who are, from beginning to end, are just trapped in their thoughts and deliberating and there's another person sitting there weeping because the pain is just coming out and another person sitting there smiling and another person blissed out, another person angry, another person just getting up and leaving. Everyone's in their own boat so have no attachment to how people respond when you're being loving because that can just throw you off your balance just like that. Just remain in that loving practice. Thank you for that. Karen Elliott shares immense gratitude, exclamation points, ah, you're welcome. overflowing on all levels. I feel so loved and supported. Thank you all. Thank you to all who created and continue to create such loving and amazing sharing opportunities. Love, love, love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And you're included in that. You're included in the co-creation of that. Elizabeth Bunker shares, carry deeper and love flowing. Mm -hmm. Feel real warmth. All is right here and right now. Love only is real. Heartfelt gratitude for all you do to make this possible. Narayani, Lakshmi, Joyce, 
the boys and all. See you in Canada. Many blessings, Elizabeth. Pamela shares, thank you so much for today's message. It's exactly what I needed to hear. I dozed off a little bit, but when you were talking about treating each person new in the moment and not to judge by clothing, hair, etc., the loudest thunder hit right near my house, <laughs> shaking my house. It's been raining for the past couple of days, but now it seems the sky has gotten a little brighter. Thanks so much for your sincere, heartfelt message. With gratitude, Pam. Mm -hmm. Luke, I feel blessed and very happy. Namaste. Mm -hmm. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. And here is one from Henny. In deep gratitude for today's message, feeling love is being peace. And from Lindsay, I realize I have been missing the heart connections with new people in a new room. I'm now greeting others with the heart. Thank you. Mm. And there's another person yeah. with Lindsay, Nanri, or Nanri. I'm so grateful for this celebration. Today is my birthday, and I have four blessed friends here to share this with me. And they don't all know each other. So it's a perfect opportunity to meet and love new people and experience love anew. Thank you so much. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And we are going to Canada in uh, the end of July. Uh, it's going to be a, an amazing journey. It's going to be 12 days and we're going to go to a lot of sacred sites and do a lot of ceremonies and a lot of really beautiful places and have loads and loads and loads of fun. And we also, we have a set number of people that we are to bring in and I've been clearly guided no matter what, I can't go over that number. So if your heart's called to come, the information with Grace will be out very soon. Um, I'm 90% done. I'm just working with one hotel to finalize some things. Uh, but if your heart calls you to come, I have a strong feeling that it will book up solidly. Well, they all do anyway, but this will happen quick. So thank you very much for a beautiful day. And... Uh, Remember that, that it's challenging sometimes. It is. It just is. And, and I know directly from a, a gentleman who was on an airplane, who was a Sai Baba devotee, uh, whose plane got hijacked, and this is in the 70s. And um, the men had guns and the whole bit. And I... And I was reading his story directly and he started to pray to Baba and he heard love them and he said Baba I can't love them and he said the children are scared and crying and my wife is terrified everyone's scared and for their lives I can't love them I'm angry with them and he heard in his mind uh, ask me to love through you and he said, okay, Baba, you love through me. And he said instantly he started feeling compassion and seeing these wounded men that were just wounded, deeply wounded. And in seeing that, he felt love pour from his heart into them. And he said they instantly started to get confused about their plans. And he intuitively knew that they intended on killing everyone and themselves. The end result was uh, the plane landed in France. Um, all the people departed. And finally, the hijackers gave themselves up and departed. And no one died. The plane didn't go where it was planned to go. Um, 
and everything worked out and it all happened because there was a person on the plane who had a divine being that they were connected with chose love and even when they couldn't they allowed loved from that divine being to move through them into the hijackers and this is a true story and so if it can happen with hijackers <laughs> it can happen with the grocery clerk it can happen with a friend your spouse uh, it can happen with your kids it can happen with anyone we just have to take that step and God will do the rest have a beautiful day see you next time God bless <laughs>